Before Juju Smith-Schuster became a wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers, earning Rookie of the Year from the team and scoring more yards and touchdowns than any other rookie in the league. Let's it fly in stride, caught by Smith-Schuster for the touchdown. Before he lost his beloved bike, before becoming a social media star, blowing up on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Also, he's pretty good on Twitch. Juju Smith-Schuster's hit. Do you, right. What about that kid Sarah Murphy? What I do you think? The hit, uh, the hit was great. Just, he probably shouldn't have taunted like that, but the hit was, uh, I had no problem with the hit. Juju Smith-Schuster was here right now. What would you say to him? I don't even know. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Are you Juju? Fucking hate myself. Juju Smith-Schuster is a truly modern phenomenon, part NFL rookie and part social media star. While smashing records on the football field, he's also managed to break records online, like when he nearly doubled the previous record for most concurrent viewers on Twitch. Playing Fortnite with Travis Scott, Drake and Ninja, the stream peaked at 628,000 views. Now we did a video on Ninja before they were famous, and in that I made a little bit of a mistake. I said that Juju had retired. So consider this video my apology. What's going on guys, my name is Michael McCredden coming at you with the life and career of Juju Smith-Schuster prior to fame, here for you one before they're famous. Now we've covered a ton of athletes in the past, in fact I even have an athlete playlist, there's like 200 videos in that bank. But let me know who you want me to cover next in the comments down below. You can also find me on Twitter or Instagram. Also a big shout out goes to the fine folks at SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. Sponsoring. All right, now let's roll this intro. John Sherman Smith was born on November 22nd, 1996 and was raised in Long Beach, California. Juju identifies as a Christian and he is part Samoan in descent. He grew up the second oldest of seven children and he has a cousin who's also done well for himself in the world of football. USC Trojans assistant coach Johnny Nansen. Juju was raised by his mother Sammy and from the looks of things, she still keeps him humble. Mom, I'm gonna be doing this stuff. You ain't got no stars when you come to my house. Oh, I'm an NFL player. I can't be brooming it. So what? Brooming trash. You ain't, no, you ain't shit. Go put broom up the <laughs> goddamn shit over there. Hurry. Juju's father was never an active part of his life, but when he was just four years old, his mother met a fellow by the name of Lawrence Schuster. Lawrence would become Juju's stepfather, and upon turning 18, he decided to legally change his last name from Smith to Smith Schuster in honor of his stepdad. It's from his aunt that John got his nickname Juju. When he was just a baby, she used to call him John John and that would evolve into Juju while he was still in diapers. And, well, the name just stuck. Juju was a huge fan of USC football from a young age and would come to look up to players like Marquise Lee, Robert Woods, and Nelson Argholor. Nelson Argholor? I think that's it. Juju attended Long Beach Polytechnic High School in Long Beach, and while there, he played wide receiver and safety for the football team. Juju shined on the football team. He was rated a five-star athlete by Scout.com, Rivals, 24-7 Sports, and Yahoo. He was even considered a consensus top 20 recruit. Juju was just 16 years old when he was first pursued by college recruiters, and they were aggressive. Notre Dame, they sent him 477 letters, and um, well, they meant to represent the number of golden diapers who have been drowned. The golden diapers! <laughs> golden. The Notre Dame golden diapers! <laughs> <laughs> meant to represent the number of Golden Domers who have been drafted into the NFL. The next day, he received another 100 letters from a dozen other schools, but this was just one of the many recruitment strategies his mother claims. At one time, he was on the phone all night, every night. He would come home from practice exhausted and spend the next five hours on the phone. As soon as he'd hang up, the phone would be ringing again. Juju made official visits to Alabama, Notre Dame, Oregon, and Ohio State. He also considered UCLA. Oregon was an early favorite, but less than a month after his visit to USC, on January 17, 2014, he decided that that's where he should go. Now if you've recently decided where to go when it comes to any sporting event or concert, you've got another decision to make, and that's where you're going to buy your tickets. Fortunately, I know the best place to get the best price, it's called SeatGeek. Boom! This is the world's largest event ticket search engine. What they do is search all the ticket prices available on the web to find the absolute best seat at the best price. SeatGeek puts out a 1 to 100 score to let you know if you're getting a good deal or a bad one. Green means good, red means bad. Now because you guys have all been amazing subscribers, truthfully, I got you $20 back when you use the promo code McCrudden. 
It used to be something else, now it's McCrud. So make sure you do it right. Honestly guys, I use SeatGeek myself. I just scooped some tickets to Pink. They're not for me, they're for my niece. But still, 20 bucks back in the bag and they were the best price I could find online. All right, let's get back to Juju. In his first game with USC, Juju had four receptions and 123 yards against Fresno State. While he was not the number one receiver for the Trojans, his coaches were impressed with his size, speed, and work ethic, considering him a strong prospect for the NFL. Receivers coach T. Martin said at the time, to still be a 17 year old and pick up all the things he can pick up and process and still play fast and be productive, is truly amazing. Juju played 13 games throughout his freshman year and received for 724 yards and five touchdowns. The next year, he doubled both stats, receiving a career high of 1,454 yards for 10 touchdowns in 14 games played. He would go on to play 13 games in 2016, receiving for 914 yards and 10 touchdowns. After that season, he decided to forego his senior year to enter the 2017 NFL Draft. Juju was invited to the NFL Combine and completed completed nearly every one of the combine and positional drills. He was ranked as the fourth best wide receiver in the draft by Sports Illustrated and ESPN, and ninth by the NFLDraftScout.com. The Dallas Cowboys showed particular interest in Juju. They were the only team to hold a private workout with him. But on draft day, he was scooped up by another team. Juju to a four year, $4.19 million contract with $1.84 million guaranteed, and a signing bonus of $1.19 million half of which he has since spent on Fortnite. I'm just kidding. Now while he was a second round pick, selected 62nd overall, he was first in another category. Being just 20 years old at the time, he was the youngest player to be drafted that year. And when he made his debut, he was the youngest player in the NFL. Juju's youth gave him a few different advantages, not least of which was his ability to understand and utilize social media to connect himself to his fans. Juju had started using Twitter back in May of 2016 and managed to pick up a following of around 30,000. This quickly jumped to around 54,000 after draft day, but later that year, he would make a massive jump from 116,000 followers to well over 240,000 on October of 2017. And that was after he used Twitter to break some tragic news. I hope it's not an end of an era, he tweeted, adding the hashtag, Team Find Juju's Bike. He would continue to use the hashtag and informed his followers that he used his bike to ride to practice. Fortunately, this story has a happy ending. On October 27, 2017, he tweeted, the story of me and my bike, we're back together, full video coming soon. Steeler Nation can breathe a collective sigh of relief. The missing bicycle of Steelers wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster has been found. I'll be booted to the morning, PM to the morning. Not only did the incident grow his Twitter following, it also became a marketing opportunity. When the National Bobblehead Hall of Fame and Museum started selling special limited edition bobbleheads of Juju on his bike. Now hopefully he saw some of that money. Anyway, over on Instagram, Juju saw a sudden uptick in growth beginning around this time as well. He had about 170,000 followers at the beginning of October and started picking up over 6,000 a month from there on out. At the time of this recording, he's just about ready to hit the 1 million mark. By the way, give me a follow because <laughs> the way things are going, I'll never get there. Now of course, everyone who's big on social media eventually gets onto YouTube, and Juju is no exception. He launched his first video on the platform in November of 2017, and the opening shot is, of course, Juju riding his famous bike. Juju releases multiple uploads per week and has already grown a following of over 400,000 subscribers. Some of his more popular content includes a rookie highlights video with just under 700,000 views, the undercover pranks video I showed you in the intro, which is over 900,000 views, and a video called Juju Pranks USC Students and Teachers, which is over 2.2 million views. That video has a nice message, stay in school, but my favorite moment has got to be this. It was nice meeting you though. You too. Of course. <laughs> of course, one of Juju's biggest social media moments was when he joined Drake, Travis Scott, and pro gamer Tyler Blevins, aka Ninja, for a game of Fortnite on Twitch. Now I talked about that in Ninjas Before Their Famous video, which I released just last week, and well, the dudes already put out a reaction video. <sighs> Hope it's good. I can never watch them, I get way, way too nervous. Before Tyler Belvins would marry his longtime Blevins! girlfriend Jessica Gooch in 2017. Gosh! McCurdy, Tyler Belvin got in on gaming Blevins! at an early age. Of course, Juju isn't just an online star, he's also a football player. 
remember? For his rookie season, Juju was named the sixth wide receiver on the Steelers' depth chart. In the team's season opening game against the Cleveland Browns, he earned his first pro stats when he returned one kick for four yards. In week two, he recorded his first career reception and touchdowns on a four-yard pass against the Minnesota Vikings. That touchdown made him the youngest player to score one since running back Andy Livingston, and that was back in 1964. It also made him the second youngest player in NFL history to ever catch a touchdown behind Arnie Herber, who was like 60 days younger when he caught a touchdown way back in 1930. Juju finished the season with 58 receptions for 917 yards and seven touchdowns beating all of their NFL rookies in touchdowns and yardage. So it's no surprise that he has racked up plenty of honors. He was named the Polynesian Pro Football Player for the year of 2017 and the Steelers named him as the team's Rookie of the Year. For the rest of the story, well, we'll have to wait and see because this is before they're famous. Thanks for checking out this video. I've got two more for you right here. Actually, one of them is a link to a playlist all about athletes. You know, if you're into sports, why not hang out there for a bit? Let me know who you want me to document next. You can follow me on Instagram or Twitter. Check out SeatGeek. The link is down below. I'll see you guys on the flip side. That's not my outro. My outro. Boom! Flip side. What the fuck's that? <laughs>